This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about some terrible news for shipcoiners, for altcoiners, and that's this conclusion that I believe that in the U.S. there will be no spot ETFs for shipcoins. In order to understand this, we have to remember what a Form S1 is. This is an SEC filing that's used by just regular companies when they file to go public. For example, Coinbase and Uber filed S1s before they went public. And these contain a whole bunch of risk factors and disclosures that a reasonable, rational investor would want to know before investing. So that's what an S1 is. And it turns out that if you're filing for an ETF you want to fill out, you have to fill out one of these as well. So there's an interesting post or tweet from Joe Carlosari yesterday saying, interesting update to BlackRock iShares S1 filing regarding the concern that the SEC could take an approach that Bitcoin is a potential security. Seems silly, but apparently the SEC wants the language in there. We're going to look at this language in a minute. Zach Sawatsky said, what does this mean for laymen? Are they still concerned that Bitcoin could be labeled a security? Joe responds, put, put it this way, the SEC is likely requiring BlackRock to disclose in the S1 that it may be a security. So the actual language that the SEC is having BlackRock add to their filing is this. Any enforcement action by the SEC or state securities regulator asserting that Bitcoin is a security or court decision to that effect would be expected to have an immediate material adverse impact on the trading value of Bitcoin as well as the shares. This is a typical sort of example of a risk factor. This is because the business models behind most digital assets are incompatible with regulations applying to transactions in securities. If a digital asset is determined or asserted to be a security, it is likely to become difficult or impossible for the digital asset to be traded, cleared, or custodied in the United States through the same channels used by non-security digital assets, in other words, cryptocurrencies that are not securities. And this could have this effect, which in addition to materially and adversely affecting the trading value of the digital asset is likely to significantly, significantly impact its liquidity and market participants' ability to convert the digital asset into U.S. dollars. And then what does the SEC do? They put front and center the example of XRP and Ripple Labs. Now, I disagree. I strongly disagree with Joe's interpretation of this language. I don't think he's getting it because Bitcoin has the greatest regulatory clarity of any digital asset in the world, both in the U.S. and elsewhere. Every single regulatory agency in the U.S. now views Bitcoin as a digital commodity. Why do they do this? Because that's what it actually is. Bitcoin is an asset without an issuer. It was not issued by a corporation or a foundation or some entity trying to pretend not to be a corporation or foundation or entity, unlike Cardano and XRP and ETH and Solana or your favorite shipcoin. So if the SEC is not telling us here that Bitcoin might turn out to be a security, what are they telling us? Now remember, again, this language is being added at the request of the SEC, not because BlackRock's legal team suddenly woke up at the 11th hour and had a last minute revelation and wanted to complicate things by adding yet another bullet point that the SEC might have a problem with. So what is the SEC trying to signal to us? What the SEC is signaling to every single institutional investor, lawyer, accountant, regulator, market participant, all these very important people in the financial system who are going to be forced to read this S1, the SEC is signaling to them that ETFs for unregulated securities like XRP, Cardano, etc. will never receive SEC approval in the US and that the projects themselves are going to keep getting sued. And that at the end of the day, there will be no place left in the US for the trading or custody of unregistered securities like most cryptocurrencies are. In other words, you are never going to see a US spot ETF for XRP, Cardano, Solana, or your favorite poop coin. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help support the channel by subscribing, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, question, and share this video with a friend. If you want an example of ship coins or poop coins from the SEC's lawsuit, against Coinbase. We can take a look here. We've examined this before. This is on page 33, talking about uh, crypto unregistered securities like Sol, uh, Cardano, Matic, Phil, Sand, etc. So if you are still holding any of those names or really any cryptocurrency besides Bitcoin, you're going to continue to get wrecked. And I can hear it in the comment section right now saying, wait, wait, US regulators, they can't tell me what to do. They can't tell everyone globally what to do with crypto. I can do what I want in my jurisdiction. And my response to, be, to that would be, yes, you can try, 
Hopefully you don't have a headquarters anywhere. Hopefully you don't live in the US. And hopefully you're a billionaire too, because CZ of Binance was all three of those things. And the US government was still able somehow to put him under house arrest. Next response I can hear in the comment section, but wait, aren't there lots of ETFs for securities like SPY, the triple Qs, etc. So even if my crypto is deemed to be a security, can't they issue an ETF for it? Nope, it's not gonna happen because ETFs like SPY and QQQ are for registered securities like publicly traded stocks. These are baskets of stocks. They're not intended for unregistered securities like crypto. But can't my crypto register at the SEC? Yes, of course they can, but you probably realize at this point why they haven't and why they won't, because this would involve massive disclosures of insider holdings and cross holdings, shady business practices, etc. And most crypto projects are run by people, as we know at this point, with the ethical compass of a Sam Bankman Freed. And disclosures like this would cause investors to jump ship. So cryptos are in this really weird place, whether they register or not, they're basically doomed. And it doesn't matter if your crypto is really useful or has been around forever or has some gigantic market cap. Hello, Ethereum. If we take a look at the end of this risk factor in Joe Carlosari's tweet, uh, the SEC's action demonstrates that such factors as how long a digital asset has been in existence, how widely held it is, how large its market cap is, and that it has actual usefulness in commercial transactions, and this is obviously addressed to Ethereum, ultimately may have no bearing on whether the SEC or a court will find it to be a security. If this is true, what I'm saying, I think this helps to explain a lot why Cardano's Charles Hoskinson has been losing his ship lately and going on these crazy rants. I'll link to my video about that in the description notes below, talking about Cardano getting flushed. This may also help to explain why ship coins have been so massively underperforming Bitcoin this year. Even number two in terms of market cap, Ethereum has just been plummeting really since the merge in September of 2022. It's been going also going down the entire year and it's plumbing new lows as we speak. The markets are beginning to price in the reality that only Bitcoin and not your favorite chip coin is going to get a spot ETF in the country that has the deepest capital markets in the world. I, at this point in the comment section, I can hear someone saying, you Bitcoin maxis, you're just status cucks. You're just cheerleaders for the SEC. I'm not sure you understand that what's going on here. I'm just enjoying the show. I'm enjoying scammers getting called out. I'm enjoying seeing Richard Hart on the run. I'm enjoying seeing Charles Hoskinson go ballistic and make a fool out of himself. And I'm enjoying watching the SEC and the largest asset manager in the world, which is BlackRock, working together to pump Bitcoin's market cap to a level where it can be the new base money for the world. You can't say that you want global adoption for Bitcoin while simultaneously asserting that it shouldn't be used as the underlying commodity for multiple financial structures like ETFs. I'm not interested in holding any of these structures. I wanna hold Bitcoin itself, but Bitcoin is a permissionless system. You can't stop BlackRock from making an ETF out of it. Of course, you shouldn't buy their ETF and give up your self-sovereignty to BlackRock and Coinbase custody. I don't think that makes sense. It will make sense to some people, some institutional investors, but to me, that's like buying a photo of a hammer instead of the hammer itself. And I'd always rather have the hammer itself and the utility that comes with it. You can only imagine what Plato would have said about paper IOUs of Bitcoin versus the form itself, which is Bitcoin, the physical. You also shouldn't sell your Bitcoin to BlackRock or anyone else, unless you don't value your freedom and you're actively seeking to become a serf for the new financial system. But in a strange way, everything seems to be good for Bitcoin, even BlackRock and the SEC. If you're still worried about BlackRock, are you still worried that BlackRock may try to do X, Y, or Z to destroy Bitcoin? I cover many of these worries in my playlist here, which I will link to in the description notes below. I've done extensive coverage on BlackRock because this really is a watershed event in the history of Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.